The documentary that we chose was No Safe Spaces by Dennis Prager and Adam Carolla. So the main purpose of the documentary was to kind of show their disagreements with the fact that a lot of times on college campuses, if you say something that the majority of people disagrees with, you'll it'll be marked as hate speech and then you'll just kind of get canceled and other places around the United States, but specifically it kind of focused more on college campuses. So throughout our documentary, there was a variety of ways that information was presented, such as interviews, where they had interviews with people such as Dennis Prager and a lot of well-known comedians. They also had clips from real events, such as riots that were taking place at college campuses throughout these hates, for these hate speeches that they believed were happening. And they also had news clips and news headings. And then one of the first rhetorical strategies that we were kind of able to pick up pretty quickly was the appeal from opposition. So they had a lot of different interviews with known liberals, which is kind of quite sharply the opposite of like what Dennis Prager believes. He's a pretty firm conservative, but they have interviews with liberals. And then a lot of times they would have these interviews and then the liberals would agree with the message that Dennis Prager would be putting out to so we thought that was a very effective way to share their viewpoints. Another strategy that was used heavily throughout the documentary was satire. And they had, one of the biggest uses was they had a parody of I'm Just a Bill, the known schoolhouse rock video. And it was I'm Just the First Amendment. They show how the First Amendment dies. And they also use clips from very popular satirical shows such as South Park and The Simpsons. And they used this to basically criticize what people consider as safe spaces. Like in the South Park clip, they're mocking safe spaces. Same with in the Simpsons clip. Yes, and then the third rhetorical strategy was appeals from authority. So one of the big ones was a clip from Obama talking about how everything should be free speech. You should be able to say whatever you want, whenever you want within reason, of course, but still, um, Obama is a really good person to use because he is a liberal and a lot of people on these college campuses tend to be liberal when they're kind of doing the whole hate speech thing. So it's a good opposing viewpoint to get an authority figure in there, kind of spreading their message. And then they had several very prominent comedians talk about how they feel about the whole hate speech thing because a lot of times if a comedian makes one joke that people find offensive they just kind of get canceled and that makes it a very toxic environment and then they had a interview with the assistant vice chancellor of berkeley which is another really big authority figure and of spreading his message about the whole situation. Um, some of the camera angles used in our documentary were drone views, and they used these to like show the college campus and just to give the viewers an idea of where they are and where these riots and outbreaks took place. And another type of camera angle that they used were the close-up shots, and they used these a lot in riots to like almost allow the viewer to feel like they are actually there. Okay, and then the visual cues that were used. So this picture up top is from UC Berkeley, which was kind of the starting point of free speech on college campuses. And then it draws a pretty big like connection to Berkeley then now having a lot of issues with hate speech and like they're kind of eliminating free speech. So that was a pretty big connection there. And then they hand over to a lot of different clips with talking to Prager and Corolla. Some of the music used in our documentary was they used a lot of intense music as they prepared for the protest to show how um, like chaotic these can get and how much help they really need. 
like when they were getting ready for the Ben Shapiro protest, they had a bunch of cops coming out playing this intense music as they came out. And they also had a heavy bass line throughout like the whole documentary just to get this feeling of tension throughout the whole thing. And also during like an interrogation almost between um, a teacher and her boss, they had this suspenseful music as she was kind of like confronting her boss about how what she did wasn't really wrong. Yes. So we both think that No Safe Spaces was very effective in how it presented its information and was very successful in kind of proving the opposing view wrong by getting people who are on that opposing view to say, yeah, this is wrong, everything. We can't like just mark anything we disagree with as hate speech. So overall, we think it was very successful.